Hey everyone, hope you're all doing it very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In this week's video, I got a good one here for you. Today we're taking a look at this battery pack for the second week in a row. However, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be diving into connectors that come on these battery packs. Last week, I tested the battery and that connector that was installed right from the factory is the EC5 that I have here in my hand. And what we've done now is taken that connector off and replaced it with the AS150s. Now the AS150 connectors are the connectors that I prefer to run in many of my radio controlled vehicles from airplanes to boats to radio control cars. I even use these in my top speed run cars that go well over 100 miles per hour drawing very close to the 500 amp mark for a very short period of time. Now I'm expecting a couple different things here. I'm expecting that the AS150 connectors are going to help in terms of the temperature that we're gonna see at the connector itself, as well as the surrounding wires all the way up to the battery. I measured temperatures that were quite high right at this point in the battery where the wires meet the metal tabs that are on the cells. So I know that the connectors are causing a difference there and I'm gonna be able to measure that here today. And then when we look at the other thing, I'm expecting there to be slight performance differences from one battery test to the next. We're going to be now running this battery here with the new connectors on a test. We're going to do, of course, the internal resistance test here just to make sure that we got, you know, a battery pack that performs. I'm not expecting significant differences there. We know that the results will vary and we do expect the results to vary. But when it comes to the load test, I do expect a difference there. Let's get started and take a look at the internal resistance that we measure here this week. Now we're going to take all the readings of the individual cell resistances. We're going to average it and then throw it into the calculator. Let's go ahead and do exactly that. Here we're looking at the RC Explained RC Calc Sheet, and if you are a member of any tier level in the Patreon community for RC Explained, you will be able to download a copy of this for yourself. Today we're gonna to be jumping into the RC LiPo Calc Sheet, and that's this one here, and we're gonna be manipulating these in order to reference the values that we got. Now we have another one to add here, and that is the second test of CNHL, so I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna play these. I can actually move these down a little bit so we can see them well. And we're going to copy this and paste it here. The new one, it looks like what we got here from last day was 1.54. We did a little bit better today and we should expect to see some variation between measurements as we do enough of these. So today's measurements that we saw in the video got us to an average of 1.43. So this is nearly as good as those G plus values that we did here. This is now in 2023 where we tested these. We're gonna see how that actually looks when we go and look at the performance metrics under load of both of these battery packs. I'm gonna compare them up against each other. So when I go and look at capacity, we're gonna enter that 5200 in here, and then for the average internal resistance, we're gonna go and place that 1.43 here. This gives us a result of 29C and up to a maximum continuous current of 151. And I believe last week we were talking about maximum continuous current of about 145 or somewhere around that ballpark. And I just checked, yes, we did have the maximum continuous current showing up as 145, so really an insignificant difference from last week into this week when we look at the metrics. And we do this just to verify our results, make sure that nothing's really changed. Changing connectors should never impact the internal resistance. Internal resistance is not measured through those connectors, it's actually measured at the balance tap. However, when we get into the next part of the video, when we actually take the results from loading the battery pack at 105 amps and review that, we may see a difference there because the connectors are absolutely part of the circuit and we are discharging through those connectors. And we're gonna see that information here very shortly. In fact, here it is. We're gonna take a look at all of this. Now I'm gonna explain a little bit about what's going on here. What we do is we have the 5200 90C CNHL battery packs. This is using the AS150 connectors and the one below it is using the EC5 connectors which we left as factory stock just as we received the battery pack. And this is ultimately what we're going to be looking at in terms of the difference here. Now at the bottom we have 5000 CNHL G5 
Plus battery packs. This G Plus, I put G Plus a couple times there. This test comes from quite a while ago, and this brings me to a point. When these tests are run, I can't be certain that the battery manufacturer is going to have the same cells purchased from the same cell manufacturer that they might be buying those off of for a consistent period of time. All I can guarantee is the pack that I'm measuring, here are the results. Tomorrow can be different if that cell manufacturer is now replaced by another one for the same brand of lithium polymer battery packs and cells. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's take a look at what we got here. So when we look at the AS150s versus the EC5, we're comparing connectors here. This was tested within about a week of one another. The total milliamp hour that we're getting out from the AS150s was 4775. This is averaging two battery packs. I don't do a complete series of tests on these. I do two trials for each battery generally. And then on the EC5 connectors used on the same battery packs, we got 4682. The amount of milliamp hour that we're getting out of it under 3.5 or up to that 3.50 volt when it hits 3.50 volts, the AS150s were good for 1643 and the EC5 connectors 1401. And then the time to 3.50 volts was 55 and a half on the AS150s, 48.2 when you compare the EC5 there. And then the milliamp hour to 3.6 at 692 versus 578. And the time there is 23 seconds pretty much and 19 and a half seconds. Voltage at the 10 second mark. This is where we see that the AS150s were at 3.67 and the EC5 connectors got you 3.65. And then the energy per cell watt minutes 1002 versus 978 and then when we look at the average cell wattage we're getting 357.9 versus 349.6 another thing to note here is that the temperature i did see a difference in temperature it hit about 67 72 degrees celsius at the ends of the leads when we had the ec5 connector and the temperatures did not get that high when using the AS150s. That to me is a significant difference in terms of the heat that those EC5s are actually producing. And we can see that here with the capability of the battery increasing when we actually swap that EC5 connector out for the AS150s. And then we look and compare the G Plus battery pack here. The G Plus battery here ended up performing a little bit better in many of the categories here. The only one where it doesn't quite win is the energy per cell. The voltage at 10 seconds is actually a tie. And then the milliamp hour that you get out of that pack was at 4518 versus the others where you get a little bit stronger of a capacity out of it. But we do have to keep in mind that the original capacity of the battery pack are different. It's rated at a 5200 versus a 5000. Right off the top, right off the hop, we get 200 milliamp hour just because the size of the pack is actually a little bit bigger for our 90C cells. And then when we look at the actual milliamp hour to 3.50 volts, this is now checking under load. Can it deliver a certain capacity until it hits that voltage threshold? And the G plus battery packs do perform better in 2023 than the current 90C CNHL here down to 3.50 volts. And you can see it's not by much, but it makes a difference. There you have it guys. This load test has showed us that there is a difference in performance. So here's the conclusion to it. If you are looking for best top performance because you're running a speed run car and you're ultimately interested in that top speed, then you will want to choose connectors that do not get hot. If a connector is getting hot, you are wasting power and you're having a voltage drop across that connector, which is losing you top speed. However, if you have no concern at all for the top speed, all you need to do is make sure that you have a reliable setup and one that is not allowing the connector to hit excessive temperatures. If you're maintaining 60 degrees Celsius or lower, that is an acceptable amount of heat as a maximum in your connectors. Well guys, hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in another video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.